cool. We finally found the perfect parking spot. <laughs> <laughs> we were we were parked over there earlier. We're like, wait, there's a weird shadow. Wait, hang on. We went to this other place. Like, oh, hang on. The light is like blinding. You're like, I, I got it. We'll park underneath the one where the the light's not even working. We got the road right over there. So you might see if you see me going like this throughout the whole thing. It's just my ADHD ass kicking in, watching traffic go by. To, to be honest, I should have known that the uh, spot that would work is the spot that's like off to the side because that's where we normally do midnight oh, reviews. In Springfield, yeah, we were parked off to the side of the, uh, Even at the, of the theater. Yeah, I guess we did do yeah. that at the Regal sometimes, especially when the sun was out. Yeah. And <laughs> this, but this would be like in Springfield if we were really close to the train. <laughs> like, right. When we reviewed these movies in Springfield, you could hear the train sometimes in the background throughout the fields. But now it's like it'd be like we're staring right at the tracks. <laughs> right, so were you uh, going into this? Were you Team Kong or were you Team, <laughs> team Godzilla? <laughs> Team Kong, baby! Team <laughs> Kong! <laughs> I'm wearing green. It's a Team Turtle. Um, <laughs> team Turtle? Going into it, I didn't really... I wasn't thinking one way or the other about who I was going to root for in the film. There's a fire truck. There's a fire truck. There is some monster action going on down there, apparently. <laughs> I wasn't really thinking too much about who I would be rooting for going into the movie, because on the one end... Uh, I do. I, I watch more Godzilla movies, I guess, than mm -hmm. than King Kong movies. Same. Even though I love both franchises, I usually find myself watching more Godzilla movies. But in this uh, series, in this particular universe that they've made right here, the best of them was Kong Skull Island, which I loved. Mm -hmm. I loved Kong Skull Island. So going into it, I'm like, Kong had the better movie. So, but, but I found myself, I found it fairly easy watching it, kind yeah. of knowing who to root for, really. In watching the movie, I was rooting for Kong throughout mm -hmm. the film. I, I don't know about you, but King Kong is the main character of this movie. Right. He's the lead. He's in it far more than Godzilla is. Yeah. He's the most sympathetic character in the mm -hmm. movie. He's the one whose adventures were kind of following through a lot of it there are some there are a couple of things that remind me of the 1960s version the 60s king kong versus godzilla mm -hmm. i wish that there were a couple of extra things here's what this needed this needed to cut away to a guy on the news several times and just several people pointing at maps <laughs> That happens a lot in that film. A lot of map pointing. A lot of, well, I think they're around over here. Uh, hang on. No, I, we've got Godzilla surrounded over here. I think we can find King Kong over on, on this part of the map. This movie didn't have nearly enough map speak. <laughs> it needed more. It, it almost has the part where the helium balloons were carrying King Kong to drop him on Godzilla. It almost had that. <laughs> But it was a little more practical than this. It's helicopters in a net carrying King Kong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, and don't forget the um, crater, uh, the, the freight, the freight. Boat. Oh, it's the got that. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It's got his little freight bed from uh, the original King Kong versus Godzilla. Whereas in in King Kong versus Godzilla, the the, the original one. Uh, Kong was also kind of the hero of that movie. In mm. in that one, there was a clear hero and villain. Whereas mm. in this, it's a bit more complicated than that. Yeah. Now, granted, King Kong is your lead in this, and he's yeah. the one I certainly had the most sympathy for. He's the one I found the most endearing throughout the movie. But I think you're kind of supposed to to a point because he's just in the movie a lot more mm -hmm. so throughout it I, w I was kind of rooting for this character but that doesn't mean i was necessarily rooting against godzilla because yeah. the plots of both of them is is more complicated it's pretty much it's pretty much godzilla comes out and he's like fuck these humans and king kong's like no the humans are friends and godzilla's like kong you're a fool <laughs> what i like about that is that 
it confuse like when Godzilla starts like attacking shit at the beginning yeah. of this movie. Some people are like, "What? He was our friend last time," <laughs> and then others have to be like, "Well, he's a giant monster. Maybe he changed his mind." <laughs> have you seen? any of the other ones from this particular series like the one from no, Godzilla no I, this is the first one you've seen yeah yeah so so okay. whenever you said that uh, uh Bobby oh Millie Bobby Brown Millie she's, Bobby Brown she's in the last one so is Rebecca yeah. Hall so is Kyle Chandler and, and so whenever you said that uh, whenever you said that Millie Bobby Brown was in this uh in the last one I'm like oh this is like a sequel oh shit yeah there was the one from 2014 <laughs> the, then there was Kong Skull Island Godzilla King of the Monsters and then and then this one. Now you are this one is way better than 2014 Godzilla. I don't like it as much as Kong Skull Island. That one I think is by far the better of the four. Okay. Uh Godzilla King of the Monsters is one that it was one of those that when it was on I was entertained by it fine. Yeah. But it went in one ear and out the other. Godzilla King of the Monsters did the one from mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. Like, I, I can barely remember anything from that movie. I could barely remember anything from it probably a week after seeing it. Mm -hmm. I don't remember disliking it when I was watching it, but but boy, did it not stick around in my memory. This one's better than that. Is that kind of how you feel about this one? That it, it'll... It'll not stick with me and it'll be gone in a week yeah yeah <laughs> do you feel that way about this I it was fun yeah it was fun i just uh and it was entertained and i was entertained i just i mean like 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 it's not something that i'll i'll be like invested in and talking about for weeks like oh shit god yeah, oh yeah. man my my guy got uh, or my guy uh king kong really <laughs> oh man he put the smack down on that lizard bitch man <laughs> <laughs> So you're not gonna go home and make that your Facebook post, word for word. <laughs> I'll do it right now. Who left the angry face? Someone didn't like it. <laughs> um, there, no, I, that is how I felt about the previous one. This one, it kind of started out that way for me because this movie has like a first act that feels kind of cobbled together from what was probably a much larger first act. Mm -hmm. Like, it did sort of feel like someone told them to get this movie under two hours. And so <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of story elements that are yeah. very rushed in the first part of this movie. Yes. Um, now, as the movie went along, I started appreciating it a bit more in how weird this movie gets. It is a lot more than just two monsters fighting each right, other. Right, right. And it does have that, yeah. But this movie makes me glad a director like Adam Wingard is, is directing this. You do see his his style and the color scheme of the movies. A lot of, like, pinks and neons, things like that. There's some synth score in there. You see his sense of humor in, in, in some places in the, sure. in the film. Certainly the color style. But also, it's a movie that's not afraid to get weird, like a lot of the '60s Godzilla movies did. Like, there's—I'm not going to spoil much about this movie, really. But man, the movie does go places, and I mean literal places <laughs> that I didn't. <laughs> That I, I wasn't... I'll put it to you like this. It did kind of make me want to go home and play Blaster Master for the NES again. <laughs> and even bringing in some other characters that are familiar to, to one of the series uh, for a nice surprise about, about halfway through. Sure. I was enjoying that about the movie. Me too. And... It is entertaining. It's an event film. It's a movie you go Indeed. see in the theaters. Now, yeah. I agree with you that I probably won't see this movie again. <laughs> right. Like, and if and if I do, I'm probably going to watch the one from the '60s. Right. It, it's more my style. Of right. Movie. The one from the '60s is is more my cup of tea. It's more my style. But this was very entertaining, and it wasn't afraid to just do some 
crazy sci-fi mumbo jumbo monster movie stuff throughout mm-hmm. it that make it look like it's taking place a thousand years in the future yeah. but it's taking place in the present I guess <laughs> <laughs> but there's there's parts that you know, the, the, hell there's one part where it looks like the light show from Star Trek the motion picture is happening on its way to the light show from 2001 a space odyssey right. with a little psychedelic Willy Wonka thrown in there <laughs> right um, <laughs> you're, you're you're not wrong and it has magic weapons like a character gets a magic axe at one point I'm like I can't be mad at this this movie is really really going for it at the end of the day it's a movie you go see in theaters to have a good time in theaters, exactly. Yeah, and it's serviceable yeah. for you. That. Go, you go and get your popcorn and your and your uh, uh, soda in, in the Wonder Woman uh, in the Wonder Woman cup, I guess. Yeah, and and you just sit there chowing down on your snacks, watching this, watching this roller coaster ride of a movie. That's, I mean, yeah, that's what this is. It, it does give you a good ride, and there's a lot of parts of it where they're flying through these worlds and other places where you could kind of see like. You could kind of see the thinking that would go into making a theme park ride out of this. Like, remember, yeah. remember the Back to the Future ride at Universal Studios? I, I never got to do oh, that. Oh, it was so cool, man. Ugh. Like, yeah, I think it's the Simpsons ride now, but uh, where you're in the vehicle flying through a bunch of. Sh- Ugh. There's parts in this that involve flying around the monsters and do, and in different wormholes and shit. Right. Where I'm like, this almost feels like it's a pitch for a theme park ride <laughs> that would probably be a pretty good one. Yeah, yeah. What'd you think of the humans in the movie? I like the little deaf girl that could um, that is apparently psychically connected to uh, King Kong, as they all are. <laughs> they have a special relationship. Like he, they explained it in the movie. Yeah. I like how uh, Millie Bobby Brown was the uh, conspiracy theorist. No, she's not the conspiracy theorist. The black dude was. I know they both look alike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, wrong Bobby Brown. <laughs> Too hot to handle. Too no. cold to hold. They call no. Godzilla because he's in control. Um, I meant that, like, what? Even though he was the conspiracy theorist, she was like his biggest fan and like held on to every word that he said. Yeah, I. My thing on that stuff because the the conspiracy theory guy in the movie who's like who's like every conspiracy theorist you see in right. like a in in a lot of Roland Emmerich like disaster movies right. whether it's Randy Quaid from Independence Day or uh, Woody Harrelson in 2012 he's that kind of character in this or, film or who's who's the guy in uh, uh, Transformers um, was. The Michael Bay one? Yeah. Is um, that Anthony Anderson's yes, character? Yes, okay. Anthony Anderson. Yes, it's thank you. It's been a while since I've seen that. Yeah, I, I just cannot remember his name. But. Uh, I, th- I thought that the conspiracy theory dude was the best, probably the best human character in this, because he does stand out, yeah. and he does have a, a gimmick, and he's, yeah. he's given a lot more of the outlandish stuff for the humans to do. Yeah. But his plot line with the two kids, with Millie Bobby Brown and the kid from Deadpool 2, <laughs> I'm sorry, every time it cut to them, I was like... <sighs> I No, I completely agree. They, yeah. they were... They were providing nothing to the story. Oh, no, no. They were explaining it in case you're stupid. (laughs) That's the only reason why they're there. Like, it wouldn't take a hard rewrite to completely take them out of this movie. No, it wouldn't. Every time they come into the movie, it is to say, that's what that is. That's what this means. That's how this works. Here's that's that thing's name. Is his name this? No, it's this. Okay. Um... That's why they're the, and and it's so easy how they find people and get into things and transport places and uncover things. It's so it's the most cartoonish thing about this very cartoonish movie. I'm like, yeah. I can buy all of the locations 
and yeah. it, around the around and in the earth that they're going to in this movie. But I'm having problems wrapping my head around how easy it is for these kids to do this shit. <laughs> I couldn't. Like I said, I thought that the guy, the conspiracy theory guy, really is the better of the human characters. Yeah. But I couldn't stand it whenever it cut back to their story. Yeah, yeah. They have said in marketing the movie that there is, like, a winner in their fight. And there is. Yeah. Not, but that doesn't describe everything that's going on. Oh, no. Nor does it really kind of say everything about the climax of this movie. But when there is a one-on-one -on -one match between this two, between these two, yeah, one of them does come out the winner mm -hmm. in that. But that's not giving away how this movie ends or, any, or, or anything like that. I, 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 I did enjoy this. I, I did, did too. I wasn't in love with it. No. But I, I do respect some of the places that it went. I, yeah. I, I do. There were nice surprises in it. Yeah. Um, so, where, do you want to do your grade first? We, yeah, sure. Uh, I'll go with a B. Yeah. I do like, I'll tell you what, I, uh, I want to mention that I did like how the movie just like instantly off to the races. Like, like, and, and maybe it's because it was a sequel, but I just felt it, uh, for me going into it without any, uh, without any, uh, knowledge of the arc, the overall arc, I felt like it was just like, come on, we know what kind of movie we're here for. Oh. Let's let's just let's just go right to yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> and so did King of the Monsters from a couple years ago. It, it knew the kind of movie that it was. This this one's better. Yeah. This one has elements to it that are gonna stick out to me more than the other one did. Plus it it doesn't have the a lot of the bullshit that the 2014 one had. The 2014 one like Half of it was great, and there's a lot of that surrounded by bullshit that just cuts away right. to random shit. Kong Skull Island is awesome. Like, it's a Vietnam movie with, about King Kong. Oh, yeah? Yes. And the last act of it is King Kong versus Samuel L. Jackson, and it's amazing. It's <laughs> How did I miss that? You gotta see it. It's dude, it's it's one of my favorite King Kong movies. I was gonna it's, say Samuel L. Jackson? Yeah. I missed that? John Goodman's in it. John C. Riley's the crazy oh, dude. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's during the Vietnam War. Like it's I, I it combines so many things I love. One, Samuel Jackson, two Vietnam movies, three monster movies, and the movie gives you all three of those right. things. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that one is yeah, How the, the one I, I like the best that? out of all of these, out of these four. Kong Skull Island. Kong Skull Island. All right, I'll bet. I'll look that up. Dude, I'll watch look it. that up. I I agree with you in giving this movie a B. Okay. I was, I was thinking that when I was watching it, oh. and <laughs> uh, and then sitting here reviewing it too. I'm yeah. like. This is almost the textbook definition of a B. Like, it really, it kind of, you just kind of feel it. Yeah. It's good. It's a lot of fun. It is. Um, It's not going to make my years best by any means, <laughs> right. but it, it doesn't. It make years worst either. Oh, Lord, no. No. Uh, no, 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 not not at all. It's, it's a good time. It's there to be an entertaining mm -hmm. theatrical experience. Go see it in IMAX. Mm -hmm. It probably looks cool in IMAX or D-Box or some of that stuff. Yeah, I think some people had the same idea because the IMAX screening was sold out. <laughs> 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 well, we'll be back in a couple of days with, uh, with the Unholy. Uh, yeah, the, 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 un, the Unholy. Uh, we'll, we'll see if that one's also in IMAX. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching.